Ben here with the Van Life Biker Show. Smash that like, give me a sub, and share, guys. Let's build this channel. Appreciate your support. Yo, yo, yo. It's your boy, Van. Uh, on that last video I did, it was a short. I uh, asked what this tube was up on top of the uh, fuel tank, and it ended up being a vent guys believe it or not i was really hoping that was a a way into the tank so we could get our heater hooked up but i ended up having to drop the tank and uh actually beforehand i was nursing a neck injury and uh dropping that tank i believe we messed it up again because i was in a lot of pain the next day so uh i've been taking it easy guys so, uh, you know, you don't want to mess around with the neck. Kind of scary stuff. But uh, I'm gaining on it. I'm probably 80%. Uh, not going to do any heavy lifting today. I got the tank back up in place. It still needs to be squared up and tightened in there. But uh, the heavy lifting's over with. And I'm like I said, I'm probably about 80%. So I dropped the tank and investigated everything. Um, in the tank itself you see you know we'll just use this here it's like a circle and uh you know the fuel lines go into the top but actually even in the bottom of the tank you can see an impression of a circle there and the reason for that is the fuel pump actually sets in that circle to keep it from moving around i mean it stabilizes from the top but uh your tubes that go down into the tank actually keep it off the bottom of the tank so I think that's another reason why that impression is there as well so you're not picking up you know trash and stuff off the tank or something maybe like that I don't know but you can see it as my point you know where it is if you're looking at the bottom of the tank you'll see a little molding circle so that'll locate your tank and hopefully this saves somebody from having to drop their tank and lift that monster back up in there it's probably 150 a couple hundred pounds maybe who knows uh to get that thing back up in there by by myself it was a, a rascal laying on the laying on the ground with uh you know no room under there you're on your back and trying to get it on your chest to begin with that was a challenge trying to get your body up underneath of it so had to kind of use you know put a block here and lift it on this side and block here and kind of back and forth so i could even get under it to lift it so it was a challenge guys i mean if you got a uh, helper definitely be some help but that's what this video is for to hopefully uh, help somebody else so uh you seen the little blue tip on there i believe that's probably stock uh if you see that you'll know what it is it's a vent because i hooked up a hose to it and blew into it and all i got was air out of the other vent i uh, no, there's one that goes up to the fill spot where you put the fuel in. So I figured that was the only one, but there are very long tanks. They're, you know, I don't know, 25 gallons or so, give or take. And it's uh, kind of short and flat, so it's pretty long. It's about the uh, length of the entire slider door, kind of right in this area on the driver's side. Um, I didn't know that this particular van has an auxiliary heater. I think they're called a couple different things. People probably don't know one from the other or whatever, uh, you know, or what they're actually called. I believe I looked it up in the manual, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. I think it was called auxiliary heater. So what that is, and I didn't even know this van was equipped with it, but underneath your battery on the uh, driver's side of the... Um, inside the hood underneath the battery there's a heater that's basically a lot like what we're doing um, actually the muffler even looks the same if we walk around here I can show you guys uh, right there sun reflection of course I can't even see what I'm showing you guys maybe I can see my hand because it's dark under there it's right here if you guys can see it hopefully but I'll show you this one back here. I'm sure we got it in the picture. I'm not sure if I'm pointing at it. But it looks real similar uh, real similar to this, huh, guys? So this is the one we're uh, installing. And that being said, what 
mine does that I'm installing, it puts out uh, hot air, just like a furnace. What that one does is it heats up coolant, uh, the water that's in your radiator to cool the motor. So for my research, what it does is it heats up the water in the motor and pumps it, you know, around in the motor when you turn it on. Uh, a way of finding out if you have one, because you can't even see it, maybe look for that muffler that I showed you. But also right there to the right side of the uh, steering wheel right there beside the uh, windshield washer knob there opposite of your blinkers. You'll see a couple switches or there'll be some uh, knockouts uh, that you put in the blanks, you know, put in the blank spaces. But I didn't know I had one, one, because I don't have a switch. But that tab is broken on one side. Uh, once they clip in, they clip in top and bottom. And I have noticed now uh, one of the clips is broke. It's, you know, sets in there flat, but people... Don't know how to remove those things then they usually end up breaking one side of it uh, when they're removing those blanks so i believe somebody has removed the switch maybe someday down the road i'll try to get it back up and going uh order a new switch for it and kind of troubleshoot things and see why they disconnected it um, i don't particularly need it myself i think if i was living way up north uh you get into some 30 40 minus degree temperatures Fahrenheit and you're talking very cold and uh, on a diesel I could see that be kind of hard to start even on a gas would struggle at those temperatures so I can see it would be uh, convenient if you were living in that type of environment here I've seen it get uh, minus 20 uh, I think it was about three four days in a row um, or two or three days but that was the coldest I have ever seen it here usually we're maybe 10 below if that uh, it doesn't get extremely cold here so uh, you know zero Fahrenheit or slightly below you're not gonna have any problems at all with the modern day diesel because there's a rail system and that's kind of cured a lot of that so long story short I just want to kind of go over this um, to save you from having to deal with this there's a I'm gonna call it a pigtail if we just wrap this thing up into a bunch of circles probably you know I'd say it's maybe three four or five little squigglies circles and uh, that comes off of the tank up uh, off of the off of the uh, the fuel pump and it heads towards the front of the van and right here about where your passenger door starts on the driver side of the center uh, it's pretty close to the center of the truck but it favors the driver side of the door driver side of the vehicle because that pump is up on the front corner uh, that auxiliary heater up front so it's headed up that way so that is is indeed the auxiliary line that you're going to want to use guys so you can confirm that without having to drop the tank look for the pump underneath look for the heater up front uh, the switch in your dash there's a few different signs that you can track down to see if you have a heater if you have a heater that's your auxiliary line uh, so you just need to pick up that squiggly line basically so that's what I'm gonna do today um, we're gonna tap off of that I was gonna tee off but why even tee off if I'm not using the heater Yesterday was kind of in a bind. This is something I'm not sure it's going to work. If you guys can do maybe a little better search than I did. I was on a Sunday, so my back was kind of to the wall. Wanted to pick up parts so I could get this thing done. I got it at Napa. Right there's your uh, part number. I'm not 100% sure if this is going to work, but I think it's going to. If you're looking for between... 120 microns uh, as far as the filter or uh, what was it? 120 to 150 that should definitely work this is 100 even as far as microns as far as uh, how tight those holes are in the filter considering it's not for a 
you know, motor like operating the vehicle itself, it's not going to draw nowhere near as much. So I think 100 microns is close enough to 120. I don't think we're going to have any problems with uh, getting this heater hooked up. If you guys haven't seen the heater, some people call them uh, little Chinese heaters. Uh, Wabuska, I want to say, makes a higher dollar unit. Uh, hopefully we can even see it in here. It's kind of dark in here, guys. But uh, you can research that online. It's, they call them Chinese heaters. People use them in these vans. They put out uh, hot air. Like I say, the other type auxiliary heater they're calling these that come on some of these vans. And I didn't even know I had one, but uh, they heat up liquid. And somehow... You know, I haven't looked into it, but I have a water heater already installed in here, 20 gallon tank type. And, uh, but some people use that auxiliary heater somehow to heat up actual water. So they probably defer the, uh, you know, the, the unit from maybe just disconnected from the motor altogether. Not sure how they do that, but I'm not in need of a little bit of water that gets hot. I, don't believe it's going to produce a whole lot, but to do a couple dishes or take a quick shower and get some warm water probably serves people uh, very well. So let's get into this. I'm going to uh, get this heater hooked up today. I'll get underneath, get you guys some better uh, video of actually what we're doing and uh, some actual pictures of the pump and, you know, or video of the uh, auxiliary pump up front so you know what that looks like. We'll Look at the other pump that we're rerouting that fuel line to, and that's going to feed the heater inside, which is going to be more of a good use to us. So we'll be back here in a second. Let me get some uh, stuff together and get up underneath. Okay, guys, I'm under here. Pretty tough to film, of course, laying on my back underneath the van. But uh, this here is your fuel pump that goes up to the auxiliary up front underneath the hood. So this guy here is going to be the line that you're going to want to use. You're going to want to tee into that. I've seen a couple people tee into it, but they teed into the front side. I personally don't know why you would do that because if the pump, you know, if it's going through this pump, then it's going to be a little restricted. So I would advise rerouting it if you're not using it, which is what I'm going to do. Take this from here back towards the back, and uh, we're going to put a uh, fuel filter on there that I showed you earlier. Come out of that fuel filter, and we're going to go into this pump back this direction. Hopefully we can get it. Uh, trying to find it in the phone. Oh, we're back this way a little bit. Oh, this is tough, guys. There it is. Um, so there's our fuel pump that goes up to the other heater right beside our exhaust that comes out. And that's the fuel filter that came with it. Piece of crap. Went to disconnect the line off of it and uh, broke the tip right off of it. So that's why we had to find another filter yesterday on a Sunday. So that was challenging, but... Uh, I got it at Napa Auto Parts, and I think it's going to work. If it doesn't, uh, probably advise going to a tractor supply place or something like that. So, uh, let's see if I can, well, my stomach's underneath the fuel pump, so I can't show you that. Well, you guys can go back on the last video. I was going to show you that hose that was up top, um, but just a little tough to get to. So, uh, that's a vent indeed. It, I know it comes back towards the rear of the tank back in this area somewhere where I'm not sure what any of this stuff is. But this is part of the fuel. Whether it heats it or something is my guess. Because uh, diesel will gel up in the winter time. So, it possibly may go through some type of heating system or something to liquefy things. Uh, down a little bit more for the injector injectors for the uh, rail system So I think that about sums that up. I just wanted to give you guys a visual of it um, It's going to be way too hard for me to film under here, of course So I'm going to go ahead and get some work done and uh, Then we'll go back over the uh, heater. 
I don't know if I'm even going to be able to fire it up because it probably isn't cold enough for the uh, thermostat to kick in. But uh, you guys got the idea anyway. Uh, if you're looking how to drop the tank, I guess I could show you that. I don't have it tightened back up all the way. I just got this thing lifted and started. But you got one here. There's a band that goes around it. There's another one over here on the other on the back side. Same exact thing. You'll just loosen that up. These bands actually come off if you take them off. But I didn't need to actually take them off. I just dropped it down so I could see the top. But uh, you're going to have uh, where you fill your tank. You'll have to disconnect there. Hose clamp. And uh, a couple vents. You know, you're going to have to deal with too if you want to actually remove it completely from the van. So pretty easy task. It's just you need a little muscle or... Maybe some uh, ramps or something to get the van up a little higher so you can actually work on it instead of having your stomach crunched up against it. <laughs> so, all right, guys, we'll get some work done. I'll show you what we did here in a little while. Okay, guys, so I'll have to go back to the other video here. This is uh, the vent I showed on the last video. It's a 90, so uh, tough to see and get the camera up in there to see and this is what we're going to be tapping onto i just can't get the camera up in there guys but right where this hump is there's a little coil of wire maybe i can get a shot here i have no idea what i'm videoing i got you guys up in the top but hopefully we're getting the shot right here there's a little coil of uh fuel line you can see a little two inch round it's about two or three circles so that's the little pigtail i was talking to and that's the actual hose that goes up to the auxiliary fuel pump up there so we're going to disconnect that and get it in the back i just want to get that shot as good as i could and hopefully we got something you guys will know before me <laughs> okay guys it's been an all-day job for this old man but we're priming as you can see our filters half full there it just kicked off because we've got to run it through a cycle and it's not going to uh, you know start if it's not getting any any fuel so it'll kick off and then I have to restart it again so we have to prime the system um, I think there is a way you can actually just run the pump but Chinese instructions I never could figure out how to do it um, there's our fuel pump and you'll notice I used wire uh, there is a strap that comes with every kit but uh, if you use the strap you're strapping to the hard body of the van and uh, really makes it noisy inside the van so you can see what I did there I just wrapped it around uh, through a hole in the uh, actual chassis and brought it down it's supposed to be on about a 45 or 30 degree angle or something like that so make sure you have a little lean to it and uh, then she just goes up and over we've got the oh let me crawl under here the uh, muffler strapped here got that bolted up on the side made a little hanger with it what they had they had like a circle strap basically to go around the pipe so I just kind of rebent it and uh, put it sideways and uh, she goes up inside right there right beside the fuel line fuel lines here that adapts to that I had a little extra I'm probably going to replace that later I just didn't want to break this seal where it comes out so I just had it outside of a uh, into a uh, like a boat tank um, last year when I hooked it up Actually, you can hear the pump again. You guys hear that? So she's still priming. Moving on up the filter. That's a good thing. And that noise you guys hear, maybe, kicking on and off. I've got the AC running. Because uh, we've got to get it cold in the, in the van so it'll even call for heat. So I think that just about wraps it up, guys. We... Like I say, the little uh, pigtail, that's the one you want to look for on top of the tank. 
and uh, I didn't tee into it. I just disconnected from that other uh, pump up front, and uh, nothing dripped out. I got, you know, I got my fingers a little wet. Probably had a little bit in the line, a little residual, but uh, I just disconnected that and rerouted it back towards the back of the tank, and you guys see where I took it from there. I, um, as far as the line, I used three sixteenths. That uh, stuff that goes to the heater, it's so small, guys. Um, but you can fit that inside of three sixteenths hose, just uh, just enough to be able to squeeze down onto it with a clamp. It's kind of a hard plastic they send in the kit. So three sixteenths worked for me. Um, that uh, universal kit for the filter I had to buy some extra um, barbs these are called so this was a universal kit you can screw any of these into inside of that filter on each end so it gives you three different sizes but the smallest size was uh, a quarter inch so wasn't quite small enough for my 3 16 so I ended up getting some uh, brass ones anyway and I was able to tighten down on that uh, line a lot better. So worked out better. Cost a couple bucks more. Um, I'm trying to remember. I think it was about $20 out the door. Maybe a buck or two more. Um, that filter was a little spending compared to other types of filters. But uh, diesel filters are a little funny. And I don't even know if this one's going to work. But like I said before, um, my back was kind of the, to the wall on a Sunday. So that's the AC kicking in there if you heard that so uh, I think that just about wraps it up guys that should be a pretty good lesson and I haven't seen one of these on any of my research on exactly where to hook in and some shortcuts and stuff that I shared and so uh, good luck if uh, any questions as usual drop them down in the comments and uh, I'll try to get to you as soon as possible uh, like, subscribe, share on other platforms, and um, go ahead and give me a sub if you don't mind. I sure appreciate all you guys that are subbed to the channel, and I can't say it enough. So until next time, this is Van, the Van Life Biker Show, and I'm out. Peace!